please rise as we bring the light in to our worship. to worship of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please join me in our call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Will you pray with me, please? Father God, Lord, we come to you this day with grateful hearts for all that you have gifted us with. But most of all, God, for the gift of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for that most precious gift that you have given to the entire world. Lord, as we worship you this day, fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit in such a way that we catch fire for Jesus. Help us, Lord, to be ignited with your love Help us, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' holy name, amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to see everybody got their clock set right today. <laughs> it's good to see a nice group here today. First reading is from Psalm 107, verse 1 through 3, and verse 17 through 22. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, and from the north and from the south. Some were sick through their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities endured affliction. They loathed any kind of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent them out his word and healed them, and delivered them from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. And let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices and tell of his deeds with songs of joy. The New Testament lesson this morning comes from Ephesians, second chapter, verses 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and the sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, 
made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly place with Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immediate riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. By, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson today is from John, chapter 3, beginning with the 14th verse. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only 
only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that they may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the gospel of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Thanks be to God. John 3.16, the most memorized verse of scripture in the New Testament. I remember as a kid watching the World Series on television. Maybe you remember this in the 70s. There would be signs throughout the stadium. And every once in a while when the camera would pan around, someone would be holding up John 3.16. So when I was a kid, I was probably hmm, 12 years old maybe, I wanted to know what that meant because a lot of the other signs just had the numbers of players. Um, in 1979, Ron Guidry was pitching for the Yankees. Um, he was a cousin, so I was really into that particular World Series, but you know, you'd see the numbers of the players, but then, then there'd be this sign that would say John 3.16. Y'all remember that? You remember seeing that on television? We don't get to see that anymore because of the pandemic, and we don't really get to see that anymore because they don't pan the crowds that might have that anymore. But the message is clear. As a young girl, I looked it up. I wanted to know what it meant. I wasn't 100% sure. But when I read the verse, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. So when I was a kid, I thought that meant eternal life when I'm dead, I'll live forever with God. Do you believe that? Yes. That's part of the, part of the gift, but that's just part of it. You see, it's for now, too. It's not for when we leave this earth that we will have eternal life. But if we choose Jesus now, we are given the gift of God's grace, of God's love, of his transforming identity of who we are in Christ Jesus. Where we are sinners, absolutely. But we have been forgiven, and we have been redeemed, and we have been reconciled to the most holy God, creator of everything seen and unseen. This beautiful gift that God has given to the entire world is just because God loved that much. It's unconditional, unfathomable to our finite human brains how much God's love is for us that God would give his only son so that all could be saved, so that all would not perish and all would receive eternal life, so all would not be condemned on judgment. But here's the thing. We in our humanness and in our weakness and our love of the darkness over the light condemn ourselves. This is a self-judgment to the world when we do not believe that God so loved the world this much. Humanity loves darkness more than the light. We are okay being sinners 
more than we are okay not being. But God gives this present gift. If we choose Jesus, the gift of the Holy Spirit is given to us in such a way that the light of Christ can be seen in our expressions, even with masks on. That the light of Christ can be seen shining from our eyes to the world around us in such a way that they want to know what's in you that makes you different, that makes you joyful and peaceful and calm and without fear. What is your witness to the world around you? Do you use the word Jesus in your everyday conversation? Do you give God the glory and give God the praise? Even in difficult circumstances, do you choose joy over destruction in your life? Do you focus on the gifts that God has given you through Jesus Christ? Or just your circumstances that are beyond your control? Do you trust God with even the difficult times in your life? No matter what they are. Judgment has come when God has given his son and we condemn ourselves as a human race if we do not choose Jesus. Choose to believe this precious gift, the revelation of who God is in human form yet fully divine, the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, our Lord. It talks about lightness and darkness, the two things that cannot coexist together. I understand it you are like three football fields away in the total darkness and you turn on a tiny match, the light will overcome that darkness no matter the distance. And this is what John is telling us that Jesus said to Nicodemus in the pre previous passage when Nicodemus of the Sanhedrin wanted to know who Jesus was, wanted to learn from Jesus more, and under the cover of darkness, which is ironic, he saw and met the true light. And do you remember the words that Jesus said to Nicodemus? You must be born again. And do you also remember that Nicodemus didn't understand what that meant? He had his, in a physical image of what being born meant, how can I enter into my mother's womb again? How does that work? And that is not what Jesus was telling you to do. You must have a spiritual rebirth where you choose Jesus, where you offer your life to Jesus. Remember, lose your life to save it. Let God's will reign in your life, in your mind, and in that greatest distance from here to here. Let God's will be your focus. And this particular passage, John 3.16, will mean something to you. Will define who you are. And has done so for Christians for centuries. When people chose Jesus over the world we live in, they were transformed. In church, I'm here to tell you it still happens today. And sometimes we don't get to see it. But you, as the beloved community, followers of Jesus Christ, disciples of Jesus Christ, your life reflects that light into the world that God has gifted you with in such a way that other disciples are made. And the world is transformed one heart at a time. Don't ever stop witnessing to how much God loves you. Don't ever stop your testimony to how much God loves all God created and how much it means to you that God has transformed your life in such a way that you are not condemned, that you are children of the light, that you walk in the light. And the darkness is dispelled because Jesus lives in you in such a way that when you enter out into the darkness of the world, the light goes with you. And you can offer the light of Christ to someone else no matter what. When I was a Los 
ask his chaplain. I oftentimes would get called in the middle of the night, and I would go, and I would travel the roads. I'd see a lot of nightlife, raccoons and deer crossing the road, and I had to ask for protection during those times because darkness can be scary. But God was with me on those highways and byways, going toward families who were in deep struggle, saying goodbye to a loved one. And I thought, you know, I'm bringing Jesus there. But I can tell you this, Jesus was already there. In those sacred moments, when those whom we love leave this earth, especially if they have Jesus and have chosen Jesus, the beauty of that is unfathomable. And it's imprinted in my mind how it's light and love even through such pain. That God can transform our fear of death and our sinful ways in such a way we are no longer condemned. That the brightness shines through even in the darkest hour. We're not far from celebrating Easter, but we must go through from the parade of Palm Sunday to the party of Easter. We must recognize the significance of the cross. And in this verse, that God so loved the world that he gave that word gave means Jesus was crucified, his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Yes, for eternity, but yes, in our present reality. Whoever believes receives this gift. And then we share it with others. Thanks be to God that God so loved. Amen. So church, I'm going to ask you to give your testimony as we proclaim what we believe. Do you realize when we proclaim through our affirmation of faith what we believe, we are testifying to God's great love. Let us do that together. It is found in your hymnal on page 881, if you'd like to follow along. But proclaim it. Somebody testify. Let's do this together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Hallelujah! Love that. But we are sinners. Please pray with me our prayer of confession, found on page 890 in your handouts. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. I'll wait. Y'all need to pray too. I'll wait. 890 is the page. Let's pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk.
walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on me. Forgive all your sins through Jesus Christ our Lord. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. You can do this one too. I like this one. It's a little hard. Peace be with you. <laughs> Can I ask somebody to bring the offering forward? In the back. Jerry, thank you. This imagery of taking the light out into the world is what we do as beloved. As we exit this place, take Christ's light out into the world to dispel the darkness, to offer hope, peace, and joy, and receive this blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord by loving and serving the neighbor. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 